Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our study of Psalm 2, verses 1 through 5, titled, The Rise and Fall of the United Nations. We are periodically covering the Psalms, and this timely study is closely related to our study of the book of Revelation. And all of these studies are available at BBFOhio.com and can be heard 24-7 at BBFOhioRadio.com. Yes, there is no book of palms in the Bible. <laughs> book of Psalms. <laughs> now, this is related to our uh, Revelation studies. And um, not really related to Galatians at all. But, uh, but related to our Revelation studies. If you were here Sunday. If you were, here, were you here Sunday? Were you here Sunday? Yeah, yeah. That was just a, that was, I was on drugs Sunday. <laughs> I was on some kind of medication Sunday. So, I kept saying Galatians. Yeah. <laughs> now, does anybody need a Bible before we get started? Because this is Bible Believers Fellowship. Anybody need a Bible? Oh, but somebody left a nice Schofield. Yeah, we do have a nice new Schofield that was left here. If you know whose that is, we're going to keep it here for a couple of weeks and then it goes on eBay. Huh? Look at that cute little bow tie. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Do you want English or Spanish? There you go. She's 18 now, by the way. Did you know that? Some of them weren't here Sunday, so they wouldn't know that. That means if she gets arrested, she pays the bill. <laughs> now, I'm not responsible anymore. All right, let's open with a word of prayer, and then let's get into the book. Amen. Ask Brother John, if you would, open our Bible study prayer. Okay, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your love and your tender mercies to us, and we thank you for the freedom of having the fellowship tonight. We just pray, Lord, your presence will be Amen. Uh, here tonight. We pray, Lord, that you give us something to uh, think about, to feed upon, and to help us to consider the path that we walk. We just pray, Lord, that uh, through the Holy Spirit, open up our hearts and minds and reveal to us what we need to know from your word tonight. And uh, may we continue to uh, encourage one another and uh, may we continue to be a witness for you, Lord, in these last days before uh, we lose our freedom to be a witness for you. Yes. Just uh, be merciful to us tonight and Speak to us, we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, the title of the message is, you know, we don't, we, I don't pick a title and then go run around looking for Bible verses to support it. <laughs> I title this, after I've studied it, this, this is the gist of it. And in Psalm chapter, uh, we, we, we call them Psalm 2, and then uh, we had a big debate about whether you call Psalms chapters or not. But uh, in this psalm or chapter, whatever you prefer to call it, um, verses 1 through 5 are an incredible, incredibly prophetic Amen. text. And I hope that as you study with us, if you pay attention, and if you have the right attitude, you are going to see that that book is God-inspired. Amen. You're going to come away with a faith in that book. That's what we're here for, folks. Amen. And when you read these Psalms, a lot of them are uh, prophetic. A lot of them are prophetic about the first coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Psalm 22 will blow your socks off if you haven't studied that close yet. Right. Have you ever? Has, how many of you have honestly gone verse by verse through Psalm 22 and really given that a, a real close few of you have. I'm telling you, it's, it's a life changer. Amen. I'm not kidding you. When you read that and you realize that was written a thousand years before those things happened. Amen. Well, this is written about what's happening today. That's 3,000 years. What we're going to study tonight was written 3,000 years ago. That is not, you won't find anything like that in any other book. Not the Quran, not any of the other ones. Not the Book of Mormon. <laughs> I mean, that's, 
That should be in the fiction section. Uh, the Quran's not fiction, it's just insane. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it's not the same as the Book of Mormon. As there's fiction in it, but it, it's just insane. But the Book of Mormon is just fiction. So anyway, uh, let's get into the text. Let's read the, those five verses in uh, Psalm 2, just beginning in verse 1. Read it with me. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall He speak unto them in His wrath and vex them in His sore displeasure. Now that is a, uh, an amazing thing to look at because we'll come back to this toward the end, but that is not the God of modern evangelicalism, folks. You're dealing with a God of the Bible that sadly is not being preached from the pulpits. Yeah. And I encourage you, you base your relationship and understanding of God on that book. Amen. And then when you hear a preacher, you test everything by the book. Amen. 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 That way when they turn Jesus into some hippie that doesn't ever say anything that's ever going to offend anybody and that sort of thing, you know that you're getting, you're getting a wax job. <laughs> Amen. 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 And that's what most preaching today is. Most, and folks, if I ever get that way, you just walk right out of here. I'm not supposed to be a politician. I'm not supposed to say things in a way that just everybody's going to love. I am simply supposed to tell you the truth. Give you the facts. Preach it straight. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's, that's sadly what a lot of people aren't getting. And you see this. It starts right out by saying, why do the heathen rage? I want to show you a clip. Kimberly Chang. Kimberly? Get out of here. Get out of here. This little old lady was carrying around a cross, taking a stand for biblical marriage. She is surrounded by a bunch of rabid, heathen sodomites. And this woman's trying to interview her on, t on the TV station. Why do the heathen rage? See, she's trying to be nice and say, I love you. They'd kill her if they could. Quite obviously, there is so much noise down, we can't hear our reporter Kimberly Chang, but to get our viewers up to date here, there is a rally down there for people who were in favor of same-sex marriage. The woman you saw in yellow came up. We think there was a man or perhaps two men with her. She obviously is against same-sex marriage. She had a, a cross in her hand, and as you can see, that happened about 10 minutes ago. Now, in this the last few minutes, as she is uh, being interviewed by Kimberly Chang, uh, many of those people are loudly protesting her presence. And again, we don't know if any police have arrived on the scene or not yet, Brooke. And without losing this live picture of what's going on there, because it seems that the scene has really not uh, lessened in uh, aggressiveness since we, we picked this up about 10 minutes ago, maybe we can show a, a little bit of... Now watch, they're going to show what they did to this woman. ...turned into a very, very heated debate right now uh, amongst these people that have come to Palm Springs City Hall to protest the passage of Proposition 8. And as you see there, that is Phyllis Burgess, the woman that we've just identified, and she walked there holding, as you can see, a large cross, along with appears to be a couple of other people. And 
within just moments, it didn't take long for that cross to be pulled out of her hand, and the woman stomping the cross by as the cross gets trampled. And, and the man that you just saw live standing on the right side of your screen, um, very loudly uh, talking to the camera, it appears is the one who is stomping on that cross. And what we're clearly seeing, and again, this happened, though, roughly eight, nine, ten minutes ago, is, uh, is a lot of anger and a lot of hate, quite honestly, on both sides. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. That's your news media. They will always do that. There was no hate on her side. She was there saying that she was trying to tell them that no matter what their position, even though she disagreed with them, she loved them. Now, what's a cross got to do with same-sex marriage? Why would they take that cross and stomp it to pieces? It didn't say anything on the cross about gay marriage. It was just a cross. Now, we could spend the whole evening watching clips like that. I've got video of preachers being pelted and beaten. I've got one video with a guy on top of a street preacher for doing nothing more than what Josh, John, Jennifer, and Sean were doing out here today. And attacked and beaten in the United States of America. I mean, other countries, they're taking them out and killing them, beheading them. Yeah. Why do that? Now, so far, that could just be a general statement. But as we continue on, you're going to see that this is prophetic. It says in verse 1, it says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Do you understand that that word, imagine, has become a key word for this one world government that will be under Antichrist? Yeah. Imagine is even used for propaganda reasons just all over the place. You'll find it if you start watching for it. Imagine. And then of course we have the theme song written by John Lennon. And that has become the, uh, what they right now are calling the unofficial uh, anthem for the world government. And at the United Nations, they hooked up half the world population to celebrate the anniversary of the founding of the United Nation. And half the world population sang that song together. Wow. By internet and satellite hookup. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. No hell below us, above us, only sky. Imagine all the people living for today. Imagine there's no countries. It isn't hard to do. Nothing to kill or die for and no religion too. He's a Marxist. Imagine all the people living life in peace. Sorry, John. We don't have to imagine it. We've seen it over and over and it's deadly. And when that comes during the tribulation period, it'll be the most deadly time in history when John Lennon gets his wish. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. That's true. I hope someday you'll join us. No, thank you. And the world will be as one. Hey, after the rapture, you better believe that's what's going to happen. Imagine no possessions, Marxism. I wonder if you can, Obama. <laughs> no need for greed or hunger. A brotherhood of man. Let me tell you something. Every time they say they're going to feed the poor, it just makes dictators more wealthy. Every time. Imagine all the people sharing all the world. It's going to happen for a short time, folks. Daniel says that the Antichrist will do what his fathers before him could not do, and that is to share the spoils. For a short time, it's going to look like the devil is God and that the devil is the Savior. For a short time, it's going to look like that. That's why you better be saved and out of here. Amen. <laughs> you don't want to be here for that. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and the world will live as one. No, thank you. So when you see the people imagine a vain thing, you can see it all over the world today. They are imagining it. 
and there's an entire movement of in the occult and new age movement where they're teaching that if everybody would just get on the same page and imagine peace and a world government it'll happen and I think that's exactly what's going to happen after the rapture give it a few days weeks or even months at some point they're going to get the whole world together and say listen if we just pull together for once and get behind this man who's more than a man and it, I, I, I have to be honest with you, until Barack Obama, I had problems really thinking that people would be that dumb. <laughs> but when you saw the way people checked their brains in, did not care a thing about his past, didn't, he, they locked away his records of his, in his history so you couldn't know anything about him. They still don't know where the guy was born, for sure, and nothing about him. In the meantime, you have homosexuals saying they had sex with them and did drugs with them in limousines in Chicago and at bathhouses in Chicago, and nobody in the media investigated him for that. If they had said that about George Bush, it would have been day in, day out headline news. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a fan of George Bush. I'm just saying that's the way it is. Anybody who's conservative to any extent is going to be roasted, but when you preach this message, and that's what Barack Obama preached. He, he was a global citizen first. Yeah. And America elected a man who said his allegiance was global first. That, it, that never would have happened in this country before. That's new. But then it says the kings of the earth set themselves. That's the United Nations. It's a complete rebellion against God who established the nations. God established nations. And these kings, these leaders of the world are rebelling against Him to come up with what He already done away with once. The United Nations. God set up the nations. Look in Deuteronomy 32. Turn there real quick. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Chapter 32. Deuteronomy 32.8, you ought to mark this. Deuteronomy 32, verse 8, says, When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when He separated the sons of Adam, He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. That's an amazing thing to read right there. That's why I believe, and a lot of other fellows preach, that during the millennium there will be 12 nations. The world will be divided up in... The, these kings have come together under the club of Rome, and they have a 10-nation confederacy. And the Antichrist is going to rip three of those out and replace them and sit at the head of seven. God's going to have 12. Amen. Keep that in mind. Everything you see Satan doing is always a counterfeit of something that's real and true. And that's what's going on with these kings who have set themselves. And Deuteronomy 32.8 says that God had divided them and given them an inheritance. Now, in the second part of Psalm 2, uh, verse 2, it says that these kings of, uh, of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. Now, this is the amazing thing about your, your Bible. And I, I have to say, King James because you won't find these things in the other Bibles. They're not there. And one of them is this taking counsel. And a lot of the translations, I don't know about all, I haven't checked them all, but a lot of them have ripped that out. The kings of the earth take counsel. Now think about that. Have you ever heard of this? The United Nations Security Council. Yes. That is your world government, people. They take counsel. It is Satan's desire to undo God's sovereign rule and to create a new world order. Satan wants to counterfeit the millennium. And he knows he's got to do it beforehand. Yeah. He's been trying since the time of Babel. Nimrod was the original Antichrist. Did you know that? Yeah. 
The last Antichrist is a fulfillment of the type that we see in Nimrod. Now look at Genesis 11 where that happened. I want, some of you, I'm not trying to pick on you, but I'm just, I know in a crowd this size, some of you haven't read Genesis 11 since Clinton was president. Shame on you, but you're going to read it tonight. Get in this book, people. Get in this book. Amen. Get addicted. Amen. Amen. Genesis 11. Beginning in verse 1, it says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Do you realize how close we are to that right now? Yeah. By means of the internet and software technology, communication has totally, all the walls have almost totally been broken down. There are very few people in this world. I'm, I can understand. I go on Facebook and I visit pages from China, Korea, um, the Philippines, and I just copy it and paste it in the translator and I know exactly what they've said. And I can respond by typing what I want and then it gives me, and I copy and I paste it on that Facebook page. I'm, I'm talking in tongues. <laughs> on, the, on the internet. Verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. That's Babylon. Shinar. Verse 3. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Now read verse 4 with me. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. That is exactly what you'll see. And I, I didn't think about it until just now, um, but I should have, I, if I had my uh, old computer, I have the picture on there. Go look up what the European Union building looks like. It looks like the Tower of Babel. The unfinished tower. It actually looks just like that. And these people who are heading up this world government know exactly what they're doing, folks. But they think they can win. And they are mimicking the Tower of Babel that came together and said, let us make us a name. Now verse 5, read that. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people are one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Uh, you, you, that's, that's too much. I can't cover it tonight, folks. That one verse... I mean, just let's just look at what it said real quick. A people is one. Or it says the people. The people is one. They have one language. We're there. And this they begin to do. This is God speaking, folks. And look what He says there. Now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Wow. Imagine there's no heaven. And think about this, folks. God said that. Whenever these cocky, arrogant people tell you that they're going to make this thing called a singularity where they bring robot and man together, it's only a matter of whether or not God allows them to live long enough to do it. They will do it if God gives them enough time. If He tarries long enough, it will happen. He said so. You th well, how could we ever get in a world where it's going to be you know, uh, peace and everybody's going to eat and everybody's going to have clothes? and everything? They'll do it. They're going to do it. But because it'll be godless, it'll blow up in their faces. But they will do it. And the longer God, it, it, my grandparents can tell you that if they, when they were 20 years old, if someone had told them what life would be like right now, 
they would have just laughed you out of the room. Thank you. 